Fellow dear friends, on the occasion of your rally to demonstrate your solidarity with the struggles of your kith and kin back home, I send to you all fraternal greetings. As one who has been entrusted with the onerous responsibilities of guiding our young republic through these difficult times, I must confess that it is always a source of deep pleasure and encouragement to me to receive assurances of the support of the people and their continuing determination to persevere until complete victory is achieved. It is, therefore, with feelings of unbounded pleasure and deep appreciation that I salute this august gathering. You are all aware that for over four months now, Nigeria has been waging a war of aggression to destroy Biafra and her people. This invasion by Nigerian hordes was mounted because the people of the former eastern region of Nigeria were forced on May the 30th, 1967, to declare themselves the independent state of Biafra in order to assure the security of their lives and property. As you are aware, the people of the former eastern region of Nigeria had believed, as if it were an article of faith, in the concept of a united Nigeria. No section of the then Federation of Nigeria had worked as assiduously for the attainment of this ideal as did Eastern Nigeria and her people. No section had made as many and varied positive contributions towards the realization of true unity. Having over the years spearheaded the movement for closer union, having demonstrated our faith in Nigeria in concrete terms, by allowing our sons and daughters to sojourn in other parts of the country, thereby contributing tremendously to the development of such areas to the neglect of our own, it was a hard decision for us to take to opt out of a federation in which we had invested so much. But we had no real choice. Over the years, our erstwhile compatriots had made it clear in unmistakable terms that they did not want us in the Federation. Since the 1950s, our people were expropriated and discriminated against in parts of Nigeria other than their own. Furthermore, the experience of the three harrowing waves of remorseless genocide in 1945, 1953, and especially in 1966, involving a total of nearly 40,000 dead and countless others maimed or destitute, provided an object lesson which could not but be taken seriously. Self-preservation is probably the strongest human instinct, and it is this that has compelled the harassed and persecuted people of eastern Nigeria to seek refuge in their own home and amongst their kindred. As a proverb of one of our Biafran languages has it, a man who is rejected by others cannot reject himself. The inordinate ambition of the House of Fulani oligarchy to continue to dominate the whole of what was formerly the Federation of Nigeria, the unrealistic desire to acquire the wealth and resources of Biafra while rejecting their people, the mad and homicidal desire to exterminate from the face of the earth 14 million Biafrans drove Gawan and his clique towards unleashing a costly war to attain the untenable the subjugation of this young but promising republic. Even with the vast resources of the former Federation of Nigeria with which to prosecute the war, 
even with the active collaboration of those international opportunists, Britain and the Soviet Union, an unholy alliance of vested interests, even with the attempt to subvert our government by suborning some of our highly placed military and civilian personnel, an attempt which was foiled at the neck of time, Gawan has failed to make good his boast to crush Biafra, a campaign which he bragged would only take 48 hours to accomplish has now dragged on for almost five months and will drag on for as long as it takes Gawan and his clique, both Nigerian and others, to realize that nothing can shake the will or crush the spirit of a determined people. If Gawan's military campaign has achieved anything, it is only a confirmation of the fact that Biafrans have nothing to accept expect but destruction from the hands of their erstwhile Nigerian compatriots. In the few border towns which fell into the hands of the Nigerian forces, Biafrans were pillaged and what could not be stolen was destroyed, while the men were shot and tortured and the women defiled. Even foreign correspondents have testified to the massive killings of people of Biafran origin and a particular ethnic grouping in the Republic of Benin when that young republic fell into the hands of the Nigerians as a result of treachery. Instead of accepting the fact and the truth which they know that they forced the people of the former eastern region out of the federation, the Nigerian aggressors have been attempting to dupe the world by claiming that we seceded in order to keep our oil wealth to ourselves. You all know that in spite of our oil and other resources, the former eastern Nigerians were always the greatest advocates of unity. General Ironsi himself an Easterner was murdered by the northern Nigerians because of his determination to unify the country. For a people who have made such great sacrifices and abandoned their most valuable investments in Nigeria in quest for safety, this is the unkindest thing to say. No, it is the Nigerian leaders themselves who are in fact guilty of what they accuse us of and have shown beyond doubt that they are only interested in having our resources and not our people. Our detractors